to the cloud. All right, everyone, welcome to the UI interest group meeting for July. I'm Stephanie Leary. I think I know most of you. Um, I put our agenda in the chat. Um, raise a flag if you don't have the agenda. It's also on the wiki. I've been working on the wiki a little bit the past month or so, trying to make the community groups all a little bit easier to find and from the homepage. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to run down some updates since our last meeting, which was, I think, right at the beginning of June, so it's been a while. Um, we have a lot of updates. Uh, our first meeting, we had a lot of logistical things to go over, including picking a regular meeting time. So we are going to try the fourth Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, which is now. Um, if that is terrible for you and you really want to participate, let me know. We will see what we can do. Uh, you will notice that we are also on Zoom for this meeting. I have acquired access to the Evergreen um, Zoom account and we are recording to the Evergreen Cloud. We will be on the YouTube channel unless we have a speaker who requests not to be recorded and publicized in that way. Other updates. We talked last time about where to put the documentation for this group, and um, I am leaning towards the wiki because I think a lot of the things that we do are not going to be tied to any specific release. Um, so it seems logical to use the wiki for that. If you don't have edit access to the wiki, shout out in the chat and someone will take care of you. Uh, I have been moving the accessibility guide from its Google Doc draft into the wiki. And that's been a very valuable process because as I make individual pages for these sections, I see how some of them are too short and too terse. Um, so it's been really good to move those things into a different format and kind of look at it with, with fresh eyes. So I will be adding to that. Um, as always, if you have any comments on that document or would like to contribute something to it, please feel free. Um, drop me an email, find me in IRC. I'm all over the place. Um, the other thing I've created uh, in the wiki this over the past few weeks is the design system roadmap. Um, we talked a little bit last time about what the the end goal is for the design system, which is a big and complex and multi-year project. Um, so I put the roadmap up there so that you can see how these individual small-ish pieces that we are biting off now will fit into the, the big overall thing at the end. Um, I have not created pages for all of these things in the roadmap yet. Um, I'm thinking we'll fill them in as we go, but I wanted to ask you all, I do have articles on almost all of these things stashed in my Pinboard account. Um, and I, I linked there in our agenda um, a couple of examples here. The empty states link goes to my Pinboard tag, and then the error messages is one of the pages that I have actually created on the wiki. Would it be valuable for me to plow through my Pinboard links and throw a few things on each page? You have the time, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, but if you don't, that's understandable too. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but uh, I, you know, I know that not everything in my Pinboard tag is going to be useful, so I will, I will take on the task of like winnowing that down. If someone would like to assist with this, I could email you, you know, say, these are the 16 things from Pinboard that are useful. Would you please put these on the wiki when you have time? That would be awesome if anyone would like to volunteer to help with that. Um, if not, I will get to it eventually. I can add things to the wiki. <laughs> Susan, you're wonderful. Thank you. I will, I will send you some things for the first few. Um, I think my button tag is especially messy, so I might start with that one. Um, but Jennifer, you are all welcome. Uh, Jennifer Pringle also. Jennifer, yay, thank you. I did not see that. Yes, I was glancing at my other screen. Thank you. All right, I will um, 
I might just like send things to the UI list and um, let whoever has time grab it. Uh, you are all welcome to trawl through my pinboard account. It's uh, open and I have a million things tagged. Um, I don't like I don't have a, a parent UI UX tag. So it's all just like specific topics. But I will go through those and start adding them to our wiki in their specific pages in the design system. Um, and we're going to talk about error messages today. So you'll get a better idea of kind of where I'm going with all that. Um, bug tagging. Also, to sort of round us up and, and get us going, I've created a subset of um, launchpad tags that are all prefixed with UX dash. We will add more as we go, but I've started to wrangle these. Um, I've added all of these both to our UI group wiki page and then to the, the big master list of the official um, launchpad bug tags, which I think, was it Taryn or Tiffany who told me that that existed? And thank you for that. <laughs> I was not aware. <laughs> Things that it's hard to find in the wiki. Um, so I, I'm delighted that that list exists, but I pulled out ours um, just so that we wouldn't have to look at, you know, the, the giant master list. Um, Yeah, feel free to use those as you find new bugs. Um, if you find any that I've missed, especially with error messages, um, since that's one of our first projects, please tag it. Um, Airtable. We have talked a little bit about how we're going to tackle the work of this group. And one thing that I would like to, us to do um, is to be able to use Airtable. And I think it will become clear why as soon as we get down into the error messages and the reports interest group um, spreadsheets. The spreadsheets are not quite enough for what we need to do here. Um, so the board has discussed how we might fund community accounts for Airtable. Um, and Airtable does have a nonprofit um, pricing scheme, which is about half of the otherwise outrageous pricing that is um, on their website. But in order to kind of move that conversation forward, we need to know how many users we would need. Um, so I've put the first two or three, I think three um, potential projects up in a spreadsheet. Uh, and the sign up link there for the Airtable sheet is where you would go to express interest in contributing to either the error message cleanup, the um, reports field name cleanup that I'm going to talk about in a minute um, that came out of the reports interest group, or coming up soon, I keep teasing this and we're not quite ready to do it yet, the uh, default widths and alignments for the grid columns. Stephanie, I'm wondering yes. about timeline for contributions because I would love to help with a lot of these things. And also, I just started a new job and know that the next few months, I'm not going to be able to do anything. So I'm not volunteering for anything. But with something like this, I don't know <laughs> if I should put my name on it because I hope to do it several months from now or refrain because I don't want you to like budget for an account that might not be used. Right, that's an excellent question. Maybe um, go ahead and add yourself in like in parentheses, say like, you know, after January or something like that, um, you know, whenever seems reasonable to you. Um, and congrats on and good luck with the new job. I know that that's a really stressful time. I still feel like I'm in that period and it's it's been almost a year, so. <laughs> Anyone else have questions about this sign up process? We're creating a lot of infrastructure here for things that are sort of going to need to be done differently. Thank you for your patience while we work out all of this stuff. <laughs> Okay, 
Any other logistical questions or comments about the functioning of this group for now? <laughs> I know we'll come back to these issues each time and adjust as we go. Taryn, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> I have many aspirations that I have not had time to make reality yet, but uh, I'm glad we're all here today and we've got this group off the ground at least. <sighs> okay, feel free to pop up if anything comes up. I'm going to move on to part two of our agenda. I copied this agenda from the cataloging interest group because their format was so lovely. So um, thanks to them for making a great meeting agenda. Um, I just stole it wholesale. Um, Evergreen has a point release that just came out, has a couple of UI fixes. There's not much there. I just wanted to kind of make this a standing agenda item to sort of go over these um, as we go. I know the in 3.11, that tooltip uh, on like grids and things, when it had a link in it, the link was a bad color and it was driving everyone crazy. That's fixed in the point one. So yay. <sighs> Um, I wanted to call out that the bug squashing week is coming up um, August 21st through 25th. Thank you everyone for setting that up. That's going to be awesome. And then Hackaway is coming up in October. And the reason I wanted to sort of throw those out there for you all, even if you're not planning to attend those, is that those are good times to get your bugs and your comments in because they'll get reviewed. So if there's anything that is burning up, uh, on your launchpad list, let us know. The other thing I wanted to let you all know from, from other groups and, and other meetings is that the board is working on a request for quotes to get a um, an accessibility conformance report based on the standard voluntary product accessibility template. So you will see these like VPATs used uh, interchangeably with ACRs. The VPAT is the template. The ACR is the filled out template, if that makes sense. Um, these are accessibility reports that sort of let purchasing offices know how we're doing on our accessibility. Uh, when we have a government or a higher education uh, library or, or organization of any kind that is shopping for new software, they will request this when they're supposed to. <laughs> Some of them don't because they don't know they need it. Um, and so uh, Evergreen does not have one of these. Um, we could produce it internally, but it's kind of always good, at least when we're starting out, to get this done by a sort of a consultant that has a solid reputation in the accessibility community. Um, so we've got a list of, I think, six vendors, um, and the there's a subcommittee of the board that's going to put together this request for quotes and get that out in the next couple of weeks. Um, they've chosen just to do, just to have the OPAC reviewed for now, um, but this is something that we will come back to and, and redo periodically, um, and we'll try to work in the staff client in, in bits and pieces as we go. It's too much to do all of it at once. It, it would be ruinously expensive. Um, so I put a link there. The link doesn't go to anything specific to Evergreen. It goes to an article that tells you what VPATs and ACRs are. Um, and so uh, I don't think we have any anything out on the, the wiki for our process yet, but we will when we get a little bit further down the road on that. Does anybody have any questions on that? Like I said, this is mostly for higher education and government folks who are actually um, paying attention to accessibility requirements. Technically, we all should be. I think a lot of organizations don't know that this is a requirement that they should be looking at. So I think it'll be good to have this report. Um, it may light a fire under some some folks. <laughs> We'd much rather have someone not use our product for 
uh, accessibility problem that exists than one that doesn't. Like, ideally, there'd be no accessibility problems, but the idea that they might be like, oh, there's not enough documentation, we just can't use it. And that's where we're at. Like, we, we had an inquiry, basically, from a, a higher ed library, and they were like, uh, we need this before we can even consider you. So um, that is the impetus for this project. Okay, I think anybody else have any updates from other interest groups, other committees that they want to throw out? I'm going to talk about reports in a in a minute. Um, so that's already on our list. Anything else? Okay. Moving on um, to projects specific to the UI group. So in our June meeting, we um, threw out some ideas for projects that this group could tackle. Error messages was a popular choice. We kind of dived into that a little bit. Um, Andrea and Susan have worked on um, like extracting all of the error codes into a spreadsheet. I think Susan had this um, started and Andrea has made us a copy of it that we can um, massage to our liking. There are 322 error messages. They probably all need revision. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to I pulled out a few of the images from this example link. The when life gives you lemons, write better error messages. Let me share my screen really quick. I can remember how to share screen. There we go. Um, great. Okay. Do you see the when life gives you lemons screen from Jenny Nadler? Yes. Excellent. All right. So this, um, I just pulled some images out of the article that is linked in the agenda. Um, this is an article about a big review of error messages that Wix.com did. Um, and I found it very instructive. So you started by sort of demonstrating what a bad error message looks like. And this described almost everything that was in Wix at the time. Um, there was a kind of inappropriately jokey tone. There was uh, blaming the third party for not working. <laughs> there was a bunch of jargon that didn't necessarily make sense to the user. And then a generic, like try again later, which is not helpful. Um, and so they went through and kind of categorized these problems and, and sort of tagged all of their error messages with these four like problem codes. Um, and then kind of examined what a better error message would look like um being a bit more reassuring explaining what happened without passing the buck um providing a clear way for them to fix it and an alternative path if they can't fix it um i don't know exactly how this might look in in some parts of evergreen we might have to kind of think about how to handle links to documentation and, and links to like help desks and things like that. But um, the rest of it, I think we can tackle. We can at least address jargon and, you know, two generic methods of fixing things. So I pulled this, the, the image in the, the article is an animated GIF. And so I pulled out a frame that I thought was useful and sort of made sense. Um, what they did was they dumped all of their error messages into, they used monday.com, but it's essentially exactly like Airtable, so that they could prioritize them, categorize them according to those problems that they found, assign them to specific people, um, and then keep track of the status of whether it had been reviewed, um, whether... Um, 
whether they decided it wasn't relevant, you know, where it was in, in their workflow. And then you can see like right next to the name in between the name and the priority, there's a little bubble with a count. And so each one of those errors has a common thread where it was discussed. Um, and that's kind of why I think that we need something like Airtable, or we could use Monday.com. I hadn't really investigated that one. But um, I think doing this on Launchpad would, uh, the commit team would kill us. <laughs> I will mention two things. One is Monday.com does have a pretty generous nonprofit account because okay. I use that here at work, not as much as I'd like, because I haven't got enough coworkers to um, get on the bandwagon, but I think we get something like eight free accounts or something. Um, just we had to like send in something showing you're a nonprofit. Um, so if it does what you need, it's definitely worth considering that. Um, I will also say relating to the errors and getting them fixed, that while all those problems that we just looked at that are were tagged are things I have seen in Evergreen for sure. One of the things that I see very, very commonly that I think we could easily miss is where the error that is being used just doesn't match. Um, so yeah. if the code says, show this error message, it doesn't matter how well if it's the message is written if it's the wrong error message for what happened. Yes. So that was, you've jumped to my next, my next thing. Um, where's, oops, I didn't have that spreadsheet open. Um, there are 322 of these now. I think we probably are going to end up with more after we we do this review, because I think some of them, in some situations, we have one error code being used for multiple things that went wrong. Um, and we probably have some of these that are being used inappropriately, uh, as you said. So I think we can anticipate that this list will grow. One thing that's- Stephanie, that's, yes. so one of my, I'll say favorite ones is missing from the list. Okay. The ACK import error. Ah, uh, did you have, you should have edit, yeah, you should have added access to this. Okay. Feel free to add to it. I think they're alphabetized. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. They're alphabetized. So feel free to just insert that wherever it needs to go. Um, one thing that these don't have at the moment um, is a description of how you get this error. Um, and I think probably a lot of these are mentioned in the documentation. Um, so one thing that we might start with, um, I, I put a column out there, kind of, I think it's column F off to the right for related launchpad bugs, but we might also need links to the documents where these errors are described. Um, so we might kind of start by filling those in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to ask for volunteers again, um, if you want to work on this spreadsheet and start filling in some information about these errors, that would be a great starting place. Um, I typically handle kind of one screen at a time, and I haven't practiced enough workflows to trigger a lot of these errors yet. Um, so I will need some context um, on how to make these pop up. I wonder if we also want a I mean, maybe this should just be in Launchpad, but I could see an argument for having here a list of silent failures, um, mm -hmm. which is a place where we need an error code and don't have one. Um, I think that's a great idea. I'm not sure that Launchpad would be a good place. I actually think an additional spreadsheet similar to the error codes um, for silent failures. We can make a new sheet on this file. She's um, laughing at Tiffany's comment, also agreeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, ACK is a beast, um, but yes. Well, and as we're going through them, is there a particular version we should be targeting? Because the error codes change. Because the ACK import error, and I think maybe Tiffany is the one behind this, 
um, actually has useful information as of 311, maybe 310. Um, nice. So it might be helpful if we target a particular version or have some way to indicate what version people are looking at. Right For now, sure. the most recent test server or community server available in English, I think, is 3.9. Um, I'm not sure what Blake's is running off of bug squashing. Blake, is that going to be a 310? Blake may have stepped away. Yeah, he may have. Um, okay, Taryn says her current bug squashing server will be current master. Um, the Equinox ones will be as well. Um, right now, they go to sleep in between bug squashing weeks, so they're not persistently available. Um, I was just looking at the community server page with the ones that are generally accessible. Mm -hmm. My recommendation would be to not do anything um, that is older than 310. I know they're not available yet, but because by the time we get to this, 3.9 will be out of maintenance um, and to really focus on versions that are um, being actively developed for we'll see 3.9 fall off pretty quickly even though that's what's up on the community servers right now yeah i agree so at, at minimum we need a column here for the version um susan do you know were, were these all from 310 they may have been from 38 actually oh wow okay i think i made the list like kind of when I yeah I think last summer when I started the project and we had not gone to 310 yet so it'd be 38. Gotcha okay why don't we fill in a column with 38 in all of those and then if we spot any that are no longer there we can um, add another column or another row for whatever is um, or if it has changed we can add rows. Did my son pop his head in the door? Yeah. <laughs> summer is amazing uh yeah so um he's very sneaky his name is owen he sometimes likes to say hi sometimes he doesn't um he's actually not wearing his pajamas at the moment which is amazing because you know it's after lunch so um What else can we do here for now? Um, um, since the last meeting, um, I have been recording the messages I get in permission testing. Um, so I do have, sorry, um, I have the permission alert message if it comes up um, and I've been recording the success and fail messages if there are any. Um, so I was going to ask, and yeah, there's a bit of a variety <laughs> between, um, you know, the interfaces. Um, so I was going to ask kind of the best way to incorporate that into this spreadsheet. Um, I know there is, you know, a line for perm failure. So, and there's, yeah, a couple different versions of a perm failure message. Um, same with, yeah, success. Um, I don't know if there's a good place or a good way to record those in there in a more in a generic fashion, I guess. Um, we can add columns or rows to this, whatever makes more sense. Um, I think we can also create uh, another sheet in here that as long as we kind of use the code as a key mm -hmm. between the two, that should make sense. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I am not super skilled with Google Sheets. If anybody remembers how to link those um, so that we can get from sheet to sheet using the code as a, like a pivot, 
That would be awesome. I don't remember how to do that off the top of my head. Um, There are about, let me open the next link down on the agenda. There are about 18 evergreen bugs um, in Launchpad that are that I have tagged with UX dash error dash messages. I may have missed some. Um, if anybody would like to like look through those Launchpad bugs and add the Launchpad link to this spreadsheet for the relevant error codes, that would be amazing. I haven't gone through them yet um, to see what codes are, are referenced there in Launchpad. I think that um, other than, well, there's a, there's a handful that have their own Launchpad bugs. I think largely though, if we can um, make our updates in the spreadsheet and then submit changes in batches, the commit team would probably really appreciate that. Did all of that make sense? Do we feel like we can move forward with this spreadsheet? Yeah? <laughs> cool. OK, we can always discuss things on the list further um, if there's any question about how to proceed with, with updating these. I feel like we can probably just like create a, a chip column for like the the problem with the error message and just just fill it in with jargon all the way down <laughs> like I think almost every error message is overly jargony uh, at the moment okay work on that and we will revisit error messages again at our next meeting um the other spreadsheet we have to look at today comes from the reports interest group, and that is the, um, oh, good to know, Susan, that the sheet four is, um, looks like it's from 310. Cool. Andrea is out this week, but I will double check with her on that, um, and we can fill that in. So the reports interest group, um, I went and, and visited them in their they just met yesterday, but the, the previous meeting before that, um, we went and talked about usability and ended up talking quite a bit about the names of the display fields in Simple Reporter, um, and specifically the circulation section um, had a lot of names that people felt were unclear that they really wanted to revise. Um, and so I went back and and talked with Mike Rylander a bit about the best way to make those updates. And what we ended up doing was kind of dumping the simple reports part of the field mapper XML file into a spreadsheet. Um, and I just did the circulation fields from simple reporter and there's all there's still 460 of them. Um, so again, this is a large project. Um, and I, I wanted to mention it here not only because obviously I think that you all will have some input on what those field names should be, but this is another sort of logistical problem of how this group wants to operate. In the in this spreadsheet, they want to suggest not only new names, but in some cases they want to suggest that we change the filters groups and the default transforms. So there's like four columns where we want to have side by side the current and then like either one or sometimes multiple suggestions for the new. Um, so again, I'm I'm struggling with like how do we how do we do this with our current tools? Um, I think I have a question adding, about, about yeah. this. Um, and I was not at the reports interest group. Uh, I apologize. I had a conflict. Um, so for the label for the simple reporter. Uh, is that going to have parity with the regular reporter or not in terms of the default uh, label, the column? Uh, 
I'm not sure if it does now. It will in the new one because the revised reports is going to take a lot of its functionality and, and appearance from simple reports. Okay. Um, which kind of brings me to the next question, um, which may be outside of the scope of everything in the world or just these two conversations. Um, is Simple Reporter an intermediary until the full reporter is angularized with new functionality? Um, and if that is the case, is there some action being done for Simple Reporter that should wait? That's it. Yeah, I I think the question of whether we keep Simple Reporter around long term is definitely above my pay grade. Um, the community will probably have to have a conversation about that once they see the new reporter and feel out how it's working for them. Um, which is not to disparage Simple Reporter, by the way. Um, we don't use it actively just because it isn't built out in a way that is actually easier for our libraries yet. Uh, yeah. Does anyone is anyone using Simple Reporter with like a a class like a, a class of of staff members who don't have access to um, Power Reporter? Anybody here? We tested and then never turned it on when we upgraded to 3.9 because it just can't do overdue reports with patron yeah. information. And that's key for us and teaching mm -hmm. staff to use two was just not something that was on our list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, my I don't have a good sense of what the future of Simple Reporter is. Um, and I agree, it, it does have some useful views built in. We could certainly talk about just moving those into the Power Reporter. Yeah, but I do think, I mean, the renaming of the labels to something sensical is very, very valuable. It is, it is. And I know we're in like a weird position right now where we have new reports coming down the pike, but it's not here yet. And um... is it kind of a bigger project though? Like having an approved glossary as opposed to like just thinking about it in terms of simple reports? Because I mean, I think evergreen, depending on where you click checkout is one word or two word or capitalized or not capitalized. And I feel like that's kind of the root issue is the lack of the same form of the term being used right across evergreen. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep, that's definitely one issue. And that is something that will go into our style guide. Um, which is going to be part of the design system for sure. Um, and we could we could start making a list right now of um, terms that are used inconsistently. And I bet we could all name 10 off the top of our heads. <laughs> um, but that is part of this first section of, of things here that we will be um, eventually revising and, and creating standards for. Um, we could certainly start there. Um, and then those of us who are also in, in the reports interest group could, could work on the names. Um, I kind of wanted to bring this up uh, because it's similar to what we're doing with the error codes. Um, and because it 
is another lens on our logistical question of how to manage these very large groups of um, labeling changes. There's a lot going on there. And that we just started with the circulation fields. We, the, they eventually want to tackle everything, at least in simple reports. Um, and then I'm sure eventually we'll look at all of the reports somewhat later. Do these tie back to the translation files currently? Do you know? Because some of these some of these labels we would use English Canada for. Mm -hmm. They do. Um, all of these are in the field mapper IDL file. There's uh there's an attribute, I think it's called SR colon reporter label or something like that. Um, I'll have to find it and, and put it in, but you can search for that and then see like all of the, the things that are in the file. Um, and then I don't exactly recall how everything in the IDL gets translated, but it, I know that it, it is hooked up to the translation functions. Awesome. I just keep going places and being like province slash territory instead of state yes oh my and God. then see what appears when we do our next uh upgrade mm -hmm. oh i have a whole article on doing internationalized addresses and it's <laughs> it's fun yeah um i don't know that we can totally answer everything today, but that is one of the things on our radar to sort of figure out how to do um, is to allow the, the reports interest group to make these suggestions and work those into a pull request somehow. <laughs> We're still working on the, on the details. Does anybody have anything else that they want to talk about on this before we move on to our last couple of things? Just if we do um, start working on like a glossary, thinking about the terms and stuff, I feel like that's one that would be good to pull dig into. Yes. Because the variations of terminology make documenting things tricky sometimes. And so I think dig would be a good pulling in. <laughs> yeah. You are right. When is their next meeting? Um... Uh, the first Thursday of August, Ooh. I think. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I will make a note to go to that one. It is the 3rd of August at 11, Beautiful. Well, 11 a.m. my time. So whatever time we started today. <laughs> ah, time. that's why I don't normally go to it because I normally have another meeting at this time. Uh, let me see what I can do though. Uh, see if I can work that out. Okay, no, good point. We need to pull dig in there as well for the um, for the editorial style guide, but um, probably also just for this reports project and the error codes project. <laughs> it's all interconnected. Okay. I had a little bullet for grid column widths on there because I, I knew I wasn't gonna get that ready for public consumption in time for this meeting, but it's coming soon. <laughs> we will be almost ready to collect suggestions for the widths. And that's also going to be something that's locale specific since different languages have different um, typical word lengths. So we'll be doing it in English, um, which doesn't have too many variations or Canadian and, and Australian and British friends occasionally throw some extra letters in that, that we don't in the US. But when we get into like Spanish and German and Czech, those are often much, much longer than English words. So we have to think about how that's going to work. 
but that's not ready yet. It's just one of those things that's on my list of things we need fancy spreadsheets for. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I wanted to kind of make it part of our standing agenda to kind of keep track of the UI related bugs. We have a handful of new ones here. Um, I don't know that we need to discuss any of them at the moment, unless someone spots one that they have a question about. Then I have a list here of, uh, I think, four older bugs that are UI related that have pull requests. And so if you would like to do a little review on those, they're mostly accessibility related. Um, so feel free to ping me if you have any questions about how to do that. And I have then a list of potential topics for future meetings. And one of them is definitely the basics of doing accessibility testing, because I know not everyone has experience doing that. Um, and it would help, I think, to have more of us who can review those pull requests. Um, before I move on to those other topics, did anybody have anything they wanted to throw out about Launchpad bugs? Looking through these, um, I think that the, the style guide will address at least a few of them, um, whereas some of them are true bugs. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering maybe there maybe there's some way to divvy them out into what are things that will be addressed by style, what are things that need to be fixed, and um, analysis I was looking through here. And then there's kind of this this other not really more like wish list kind of thing that kind of falls into neither of those. Yeah. Do I have... No. Um, I have UX dash bug labels for error messages and form hints. I did not create a general one for like style guide or editorial changes. Do you think we should do that and then go through and tag those bugs? I think it might be helpful at least temporarily. Yeah. Okay. To have I, at least a style. Mm -hmm. I know of lots of bugs that I would tag with UX style. Okay. Uh, <laughs> why don't we, let's call it um, either either style guide, let's call it style guide because style can also refer to CSS um, mm -hmm. and I don't want to get that yeah. confused. Um, my, I want to call it microcopy, but that's so jargony. <laughs> like, does does yeah. anyone but me <laughs> use that word? Yeah. Probably not. Um, yeah, I think style guide would, I mean, it's pretty mm -hmm. self-explanatory if you see that. Okay. And to be clear, we're saying UX dash style guide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should we do it like, like that without any extra dashes? Or would people prefer to have oh, no, an extra like dash? That. Like that, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> One dash. okay, great. I will go canonize that after this meeting if no one else has beaten me to it. Um, and we can go tag all of the things that are just editorial questions and not like functionality um, kind of things. That would be great. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. And Jennifer, I look forward to the, the, the mess of bug updates when we get that in there. <laughs> There's a lot of heading title issues. Yes. And we have, I know that we have a general bug for mismatch between like navigation uh, item label the and menu. heading label. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's quite a few of those. Um, okay. Other potential topics for future meetings. Um, I'm going to be doing a big review of color pretty soon. Um, and I talked about that a little bit at the 
conference. I know some of you were there, um, but I could kind of break that out and talk more about the psychology that is in play in our color choices and the accessibility considerations, general best practices. Um, so color is kind of a big topic. I'm not even sure I could squeeze that into like a 40 minute talk, but we can give it a whirl. Um, I mentioned accessibility testing. Um, I think one thing I had talked about, was it with you, Ben, at the conference about just like how to find the style sheets that you want to like look at and, and figure out where those are in the code base so that you can even make a pull request to, to change things? That is tricky. Um, we could certainly talk about that. Um, we also do have a few things on the new devs section of the wiki that I think are getting started towards answering that a little bit um, in the Angular sections. We're, we're beefing up the new devs documentation. Um, and then since we're talking about error messages and form labels and all of that, we could spend quite a bit of time just talking about best practices for form UX. So those are a few ideas. Does anybody want to suggest something else or call out one of those for our next meeting in August? All of the above? <laughs> I want to talk about all of them eventually, but we have to pick and choose. I mean, I would, I know that many of you are way more technically in, involved in, in this than I am. But I'd really like to talk about how to navigate evergreen files. I mean, once I'm into the files, obviously I can like recognize HTML and CSS, but just sure. like getting there um, can sometimes be a challenge. So it can always be a challenge, not sometimes, always a challenge for me. Always a challenge, for sure. Let's put that one up first because that's going to inform a lot of our work on error codes and colors and all of that. I think that sounds like a good idea. Um, anybody else disagree? Want to throw out something else? Highlight this real quick. All right. Yeah, the, it is tricky to find the files. And you know what? I might tap Taryn and Tiffany on the shoulder a little bit and say we should collaborate a little on that. And look at that. Taryn's already got a link to the new devs. Brilliant. Yeah, my trick, um, you know, assuming that you've, assuming that you're in an Angular interface, which you can tell by looking at whether it has the full like en-us or en-ca or something like that in the um, in your locale in the URL. Um, once you're there, you open up your inspector, you find like highlight the thing that you want to look at and then go up until you see a, like a custom HTML tag that starts with eg usually. And that will tell you what component you're in. In simple reporter, they start with SR. Um, so some like it's not always EG. Sometimes it's and then if you're looking at one of the Angular Bootstrap stock components, it starts with NGB for Angular Bootstrap. Um, thank you for this file, Taryn. This is great. But that's my trick for figuring out like where I need to go. Um, to like find the nearest custom HTML tag and then match that up in the Angular files with a selector. Um, and that's how I find my component. It doesn't always work out that neatly, but usually it does. But we'll talk about that more next time. Um, so that's the quick trick. We'll, we'll go into depth in our next meeting. Okay. We had a lot to talk about. I had a feeling I was going to end up talking and not let anyone get a word in edgewise. And indeed, it was so. <laughs> Anybody have anything else they want to throw out in our last couple of minutes? I popped in just to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 
Oh, good to hear. Thank you, Blake. All right, so your homework is to go sign up for the Airtable interest sheet so that the board can get an idea of how many people we're talking about. Uh, I, it's called Airtable, but hey, we might look into monday.com as well. Um, thank you for letting us know, Ben, that that was a good option. And our next meeting is scheduled for August 24th, which is the day before I go on vacation. So I will be halfway out the door at that point. Um, we'll plan to talk about how to navigate the evergreen files and we'll update on all of these other projects. And I will see you in a month. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone. Bye. Thank you.